Hello, my dear starseeds and skeptics. My name is Fiona from Spiritual Journey, and we are the lightworkers.com.au. And today I wanted to talk about starseeds. This week I was asked, What is a starseed? And I realized I remembered that it's not actually as common to everybody else as it is to myself and a lot of us on this journey. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what a starseed is and what that means for us on our journey. And before I do that, I want to just share a little disclaimer. Everything I'm going to talk about in this video may sound just a little bit weird. For some people, it may sound a lot weird. For those of you who know me, don't worry, do not send uh, little men in white with white jackets. I am absolutely fine. Um, I might link my Are We Crazy, Crazy post below as well because I know the first time I started believing in this stuff, I wasn't quite sure whether I should just check into a bit of a crazy place. Uh, but the more I go on this journey, the more I realize that I probably am a little crazy and it does sound a little weird, but I'm definitely not alone. And for some of you, when you hear this, it's going to sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, completely made up and utterly ridiculous. For others, it's going to sound like it's out of a sci-fi movie and utterly ridiculous. But there's also a part of you that's going to resonate at a deep level. There's a knowing when you go on this journey that rather than hearing this like it's for the first time and that it's all being made up, for some of us, for those of us who are star seeds or light workers, there's a resonance that there's a knowing that it's true. It's like a remembering rather than being taught. There are some books you'll discover that you'll read that for some people they read it like it's revolutionary. For me, it reads like a history book. There's things that I've learned on this journey that it's the first time I've ever heard anybody else speak about it but it sounds like it's something I've known forever. It's something that I agree with and I, I absolutely, of course that makes sense. It all just reconciles easily into my own unconscious and my own belief about the world and the universe and what's going on out there in a way that doesn't make conscious sense. You know, for most things in our life as we go through, we learn them, we hear them from somewhere, we read them in books, we learn them from school. We're taught by our magical big people in our tribe, our parents, our grandparents, older brothers and sisters. Along this journey, there are some places we just don't fit in. So what is a star seed? A star seed is a term. It's something that is referred to. Um, it could be a star seed or a light worker. Um, one of the 144,000 prophesized. Uh, a volunteer is how I heard it described by Dolores Cannon the other day. Whatever word or label is associated with it, what it is, is there is a, an understanding or a, a knowing or a belief that a group of us from somewhere else volunteered to come to Earth. So Earth is a school, it's a training ground. It's something, it's a planet that was seeded it's it's a mix between evolution and creation it's something that humans have evolved over time but there are far more advanced beings that sort of knew it was happening that we they were part of our evolution and there's so much more I'll go into over the future videos about this but what happened was we were left, humanity was left alone. It's a place where we souls incarnate into because it's got a very specific set of rules. Uh, it's a planet of free will. And so anything goes. And over time, as it's, a, as it's evolved, because of the laws of free will, some of the humanity was corrupted by evil. And there is a decree, it's like out of Star Trek, there is a decree that is um, advanced civilizations can observe but can't interact or influence with an evolving species. So for, probably through trial and error, many advanced civilizations will, will go to a, a forming or evolving civilization and be able to watch it and see it in their spaceships up there and be able to observe what's going on. But if they were to come in and give too much guidance, then the risk is that they would give a little bit or too much information too soon before the civilization was ready for it. 
And again, I'll go into this deeper in future videos, but this is a lot of the beliefs around what happened with Atlantis or ancient civilizations where they reached a level of um, growth that was too much for them to handle and they kind of imploded. Um, what we saw, particularly in the last century with the wars, so World War I and World War II, as humanity was evolving, we got to a point of our scientific evolution and our logical evolution where we could literally destroy the planet. And this was a problem because the planet Earth, where it sits in the solar system, where it sits in the galaxy, it's in a very unique position. And what was foretold was that if the planet itself exploded, it would have ripple effects on other forming civilizations and advanced civilizations that are out there. No, we're not alone. And everybody, the government knows this is just a cover-up. And what would happen is if Earth itself ceased to exist, the planet ceased to exist, then the problem with that is it would have ripple effects and ramifications for every other planet and civilization in our galaxy and in parallel universes beyond ours. So it wasn't just a little, whoops, they blew it up. It was a really big deal. And Earth is one of only a few specific planets with um, specific laws around gravity and things like that that allow for an emotional and physical test and development that is required on our soul evolution. So it was really important that Earth as a planet survive and it was really important that um, humanity didn't blow it up by accident. So it's it's almost like as a society, as a, speci as a species, it's okay if humanity blew themselves up, but not to the extent where it would destroy the actual planet and its location in the solar system. That's the what they were trying to prevent. So the committees, the councils, they refer to themselves as many different things, but essentially the, the galaxy councils. And if you've watched any Star Wars or Star Trek, that's where they get these images from, this galactic council, came together, recognizing that we can't just go in. And if they couldn't just show up in their spaceships and tell us to knock it off. Could you imagine what humanity would do if a thousand spaceships just suddenly appeared in the sky? You know, look at what happens to people who see one. So it wasn't useful to show up. So we had to, and, and we couldn't intervene in a way that violated free will. So it was agreed that they put a call out. It was agreed that beings of love and light. So as we evolve in our spiritual journey, we get closer and closer back to a high vibration of love, light, pure energy, which is all love. The lower vibration is um, a, a fear or a stuck energy and a lack of love. So there's a lot of fear on planet Earth in humanity at the moment, which has been um, exaggerated and manipulated by corrupt people, that, whether you call them the cabal or the dark or whatever they are referred to in, in whatever level you're up to in your journey. Um, government, big pharmaceutical, whatever you want to call it. So fear causes a lot of or earns a lot of money war earns a lot of money disease earns a lot of money they're multi-billion dollar industries based on fear so what was agreed was a call went out i believe after world war one or world war two a call went out galactically recognizing the path that humanity was on and recognizing the level that humanity had got to that they could literally destroy the earth and so the call went in that there would be three waves of volunteers. They were looking for volunteers of people in the more advanced realm. So these might have been what we refer to as ETs, aliens on other planets. Um, it, it, some of the uh, volunteers came from the pure source, which is people that had already gone through their soul evolution, had gone through all the many, many lives of lessons and tests and found their way back to pure love and pure source energy and the source is the beginning some societies call it love or Allah whatever um, God you know whatever your belief set is fits within this greater being of once there was nothing just source there was just energy and the call went out and 144,000 is, is one number um, but waves of volunteers answered the calls and this is people people souls that are very very advanced love and light really know just pure energy 
And what was decided was rather than coming in external and showing up, these volunteers would instead be born into the corrupt system. We would be born into the fear and the darkness and the stuckness. Um, all the souls that had got stuck in the trap of reincarnation because they couldn't remember their lessons. And we as volunteers would come in with a very unique perspective. We would retain our emotional memory of pure love, um, pure light vibration. And, but we would have to abide by the same rules. So we would be born in and forget everything, which is the rule of birth. Um, we would forget that we were volunteers. We would forget why we came. We just, we knew we came to help, but the only way to help was to infiltrate the system, was to be born into the system and help from the inside out. There's still workers going on in the galaxy as well, but a big portion of us were born into the system to remember, <laughs> to wake up one day and remember. And we were, we were wired for a certain point. So 2012 is a, is a a, another number that resonates with a lot of people as a year that it was um, an awakening year. It, it's, it's not what they talk about where these 144,000 prophesies are going to show up and, you know, kick us off the planet or take the righteous and condemn the, the evil. And it, it's not about that. Because when we get to the higher stages of love, we recognize that these higher levels of ascension, we recognize that there is no good or evil. There is simply us. We all exist. We all embody these traits. Unconditional love is the embracing of both. It's the integration of masculine and feminine. It's the integration of light and dark. And it's a recognition that, that all exist within a system. And to get to light, we must understand and experience dark as well. Uh, there is only love and fear. And fear is simply fear of lack of love. So there is only love. And these are the beliefs that the light workers and star seeds will be born with. There is a lot that we just know to be true that doesn't make sense to the rest of the world. Um, a lot of light workers were born into a, into trauma, uh, born into abuse or very dark circumstances and then found their way out. Some of us were lucky. We were born into really beautiful situations uh, and then created our own traumas and then found other ways through it. So we've all born into different. We chose the parents. We chose the location so that we would all be perfectly positioned for this exact time in our life. Now, I was listening to something the other day and um, it explains it really well. So Dolores Cannon is a hypnotherapist and she works on the deepest levels of the unconscious and she's published thousands of, oh, lots and lots of videos and, and sorry, uh, hypnotized thousands of people. And it's as close to scientific research as we can get because a lot of the people were saying the same thing. And what they were saying is there were three waves. So the first wave would be today would be in their late 50s and 60s. This was the first wave of volunteers that came in. They were born the baby boomers um, just after the war. So they were born into that wave, that generation, uh, really set on a path of changing from fear to love, really just having an innate ability to um, bring lightness to the world. A lot of them, if you look at amazing figures in history, You'll, you'll discover there were people, um, I believe, you know, people like John Lennon and, and people that went on to create really ahead of their time um, work in, in, in different spaces, whether it was art, creativity, music. Um, I believe a lot of people that were influencing technological advances. Um, personally, I believe Steve Jobs was potentially from this group as well, just with what was created. There's so much that was, it was like we, we all had to, we all had a job, a mission to do to prepare the world to be ready to transition into love and away from fear. This waking up ascension energy that's going on at the moment was coming. The planet Earth was literally moving to this position. So it was like we had to all be here to help the transition through. Uh, the second wave is my generation which is we're all around um, 30s at the moment, very late 20s, mid 30s at the moment. Um, and we were the children of 
that generation. So I believe that there are waves of the parent and the child and the child as well. So that these generations. Interestingly, about my generation of light workers, um, we were very much on the cusp of old world, new world. So we were pre Google, uh, pre internet, pre phones, pre technology and post technology it was coming very strongly in our generations as we were coming through so i'll explain a lot deeper later about why technology is so important in the awakening um but this group of star seeds and, and workers for a lot of us we found it easier because we were born into the the first wave went first and they were met with the greatest um rejection and and fear and pain and judgment and then they paved the way for us. So my generation, we do get to be on this part of the journey where we get to be a little bit more accepted. There are people that we are learning from that have already done this work ahead of us. Not easy. I'm not saying it been easy. We've definitely had our own fair share of challenges. Um, I notice a lot of our generation still has been suppressing and repressing for a long time and trying to fit in and we feel ourselves caught between two worlds. I remember writing a song when I was 15, 16, which is when the powers start to come online. Um, and I remember writing a song about being stuck on the outside and just wondering why I didn't fit in. I don't understand this particular reality. I just, I couldn't understand how people could be mean and cruel. And it doesn't make sense because where I'm from at a soul level, we've gone beyond that there is there is pure love we recognize that it's a symbiotic relationship rather than a dog eat dog in competition relationship so it just it just doesn't make sense it means we're very naive and get taken advantage of a lot um but we always come back to this belief that love will prevail and love will win i don't know with disney must have been a light worker so the third wave would be the teenagers now. So they're just coming into um, late teens at the moment. And this is the wave where these are the teenagers that you see that are just amazing, uh, you know, coming out with amazing philanthropic work or creativity or music. Um, you know, that something I saw the other day with this teenage boy and he was given some pocket money and was going to buy a toy and then just saw someone was hungry and starving so he started a charity um it's these kind of kids that just they they don't actually believe in limits everything is just of course and everything is for the greater good um at the same time the same wave if they're not given such a beautiful environment these are the teenagers that are that are committing suicide right now so these are the teenagers that are really struggling with bullying cyber bullying just some of the most horrendous things happening because they genuinely can't understand the cruelty. And to be bullied, you have to love and believe in the best in the bully, see the best in the bully as well, which is what light workers and star seeds do. We see the best in everybody. We just believe in kindness and generosity. Um, and at the moment, the way society is going, um, they're either being medicated or uh, ignored or... Um, or bullied to a point of just deciding it's too bloody hard. And the challenge for us as starseeds at all the three generations, um, and of course this overlaps a little bit as well, but these are the predominant three waves. The challenge is a feeling of deep loneliness and a deep longing of going home. Uh, there's a real sense of just not fitting. We just don't fit at all. Um, you know, we're often travellers, we, we leave somewhere, we go away trying to find ourselves or trying to find home um, and then finally realise that wherever we go, there we are and, and home is actually a place in our soul and it's a well beyond our original home uh, town. Um, and that the challenge for teenagers is if they can't get out of the situation, then they just, this is too hard. You know, a lot of the volunteers, a really interesting insight into the volunteers or star seeds that came through, some of them have had many incarnations of soul journey, but never on earth, never on this planet. So for some of the volunteers, this is the first time they've ever felt the heaviness and the toxicity and the fear and the violence and what's really going on here. 
knowing intellectually, it's like conceptually we knew what we were getting ourselves into, but if you've never felt it, you don't know it. Like learning to swim. You can conceptually understand what swimming is and, and, and read all the books and think you know what you're getting in for when you jump in the pool. But until you get into the water, you don't understand the feeling of the water, the heaviness and the weight and the, the, the everything that's associated with that. And that's what it was for the star seeds and the light workers. There's so many stories of people that at all generations um, ended up in loony bins, ended up in psych wards, ended up checking out, committing suicide or trying to commit suicide. You know, I'd be surprised if I met a light worker that hadn't at least considered it. And luckily, a lot of us come from a, a good enough environment that we never had to go through with it, which is thank goodness for that. Um, but it's because of this deep sense of it's just not right here. Um, the other thing, so how to recognize a light worker, and I'll do loads more videos on these kind of things, but the thing with a light worker is they vibrate um, emotionally, their natural state is joy, is kindness, is their default position is I just want to take care of people, um, can't we all just get along? Um, isn't there just love? You know, everything just comes back to that. This real desire to love and be loved and care for others and nurture and always consider what's good for others and the greater good, usually at the expense of self. And they they light up the room. These are these people that have the X factor, you know, that have that energy where everybody just wants them. So a real challenge as a star seed and as a light worker is our energy. Um, in terms of illnesses, a lot of light workers are suffering things like fibromyalgia, um, chronic fatigue, uh, a lot of the adrenal fatigues as well. Because what happens is when we open our hearts, everybody wants a piece of it. Um, it's very easy to become successful, but very exhausting. Um, you're very employable or you, you're probably a person that's contacted by a lot of the multi-level marketing groups. Um, you're a person that people just gravitate to. They just want to be around. Um, you know, it, it's a very much a very attractive energy when we open our hearts up, which is very depleting because we've often never been taught how to protect ourselves because we come from a place where it's not necessary. Um, and we don't necessarily understand what to do. A lot of light workers and star seeds are empaths, very empathic, literally feeling other people's energy. Um, for me personally, I've gone through waves of uh, learning about healings, learning how to separate myself. I went through loads of times where I've got sick because people around me are sick or toxic or negative. So I'm very susceptible to walking into an environment I can feel feel the energy of a room um, and it's great for others because when when we walk in as as light workers and star seeds it's not about being arrogant guys it really is very easy to light up a room it's very easy to attract clients or attract um, opportunities to us we we come from a very magnetized we understand about the thoughts create things and those kind of realities but the challenge is how do we preserve our own energies in a world where we've literally come into the opposite of that. Um, and so that's where a lot of the traumas come from and, and a lot of the just not being able to cope, not being able to handle it. So I trust this is weird, but makes sense to some of you and I'm not doing this video for everybody I am very aware that in making the decision to go public and start this YouTube channel I am very aware that I'm opening myself up for all kinds of trolls and and all, all kinds of um, fear-based energy to latch on and and I'm I'm doing it because um, part of my particular role and I'll, I'll do another video where I talk about the different roles that we've taken on but Part of my particular role is um, a bridge. Um, part of my role is part of the awakening team. So I'm, I'm here to have the courage to be out here publicly because I know that it's my job to help other people hear this message. It's not the same for everybody. 
um, some light workers and star seeds are not here to publicly talk about the work of the light. They are just here to be it. And as a star seed, we don't actually have to do anything. Um, we actually just have to maintain our love, maintain our light and stay alive. You know, a lot of the clients I work with have been through horrific things in their life. Um, and I recognize now that's why I'm able to work with such traumatic clients. Um, but our job was to stay alive past this point. Um, it was just by any means possible, stay alive long enough for all three generations to come online. And our powers, our connectivity comes online really strongly around the age of 15. Um, it was to stay alive long enough that enough of us would be still here in this planet after 2012 or through the transition awakening time. And, and I'll talk about the energy times as well. Um, there is so much going on energetically with our planet. Whether you look at this from a purely scientific point of view or from a spiritual point of view, which I believe is just more advanced science, um, there is so much going on and we, we just had to be alive long enough to get to this point. Now it's about moving into the next stage, which is bringing it out and, and tipping the tide and turning the entire society. So now it's we are waking up so that now we can help and, and do the mission we agreed to come in for, which is to help not just bring love and be love, but teach love and guide love and, and, uh, and help others through this transition process as well. Um, so I get it sounds a bit weird, but for me, when I started to hear people talking about this, it was the biggest relief. It was the biggest weight off my shoulders because I'd always known I was weird and different and I didn't fit in. But... The difficult thing in olden days is that we couldn't find each other. And this is why I love technology. This is why I believe Steve Jobs and anyone in, who is a part of getting technology into the hands of many is critically important for our mission. Um, I believe viral cat videos were critically important for our mission because they showed us that we could reach each other quick enough. We can be in any part of the world and connect with people that are part of our same mission group, our same soul group. We're not bound by location anymore. We're not bound by time. We're not bound by distance. We genuinely can find others like ourselves and not feel completely weird and alone. Um, recognizing that we're not helps us come together and helps to give us confidence to follow through and fulfill. And I'll, I'll link a couple of different articles down below because Quite frankly, if we are just crazy, then all we're talking about is unconditional love. We're talking about kindness and generosity. We're talking about being a wonderful example of how to take care of others and take care of the greater good. And we do that through taking care of ourselves. We'll talk about, you know, chemical free living and, and um, generosity and, um, and, and coming back to nature. So we might be crazy, but I think unconditional love is a good kind of crazy. And I love getting to be this um, tour guide for everybody. So enjoy. Remember, I am okay. <laughs> um, and I really trust if this resonates with you, perhaps you're not ready to admit it publicly yet. Completely fine. You're welcome to comment below. Or if it's resonating, but you're not quite ready for that kind of everybody knowing commitment, Feel free to email me directly, get in touch. There's loads of links there. Um, I'm here to help, I'm here to be part of the journey. And I really look forward to hearing what you're going through and how it resonates. So until we speak again, take care of you, take care of others and take care of the greater good. Bye for now.